Okay, now we're live. Hi, everybody. Hey. So I'm Kate Payne, and we're here with Sarah Monroe and Doreen Morin Van Dam. And um, thanks for joining us. And if you're watching the replay, thanks for joining on the replay. Uh, Sarah Monroe is our facilitator today. She had this fabulous idea of how not to do video conference. So I think we're going to mix a little humor and a little like, don't do this, but do this. And right. uh, Sarah, take it away. Well, thanks. You know, today's awkward moment day. And I've had these awkward moments in the last 48 hours with some folks who I love dearly, but they're just doing it wrong. You know, it's well, I think like they, they could they could do it so much better. So what we want to do, we've done this a lot um, between the three of us over the last how many ever years of our careers that we've been doing this. Um, so we just wanted to share some some of our favorite tips, have some lighthearted fun about some of the things that we're seeing and to make sure that as we're doing this new video conferencing, this new everybody working remote world for right now, that you have some great tips from your friends because you know us um, and you don't have to watch those stuffy um, video tutorials <laughs> and we can uh, share some good thoughts today. So yeah, thanks everyone. You know I was just gonna say, you know, if, you, if, if you're just tuning in, when we're talking about how not to do video conference, I'll, I'll I'll remind you all of a viral video that went viral, what, a year or two ago? It was that guy who was doing a CNN clip and he was in his home office and mm -hmm. he's like in a suit and tie sitting at his desk. He probably had jeans on from the waist down or something. And the door opened and his little toddler came running in and was like this and like yeah. licking a lollipop. And then the little baby <laughs> came in on the walker. And then his wife came through and she's like ducking down, trying to grab them and pull them back. Yeah. Anyway, that stuff's just going to happen. But yep. um, but uh, so it's kind of in that vein of like um, how you can make this work better. Right. 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 You know, that was actually five years ago. Was it five years ago? Yeah, it was five years ago. So. Wow. Well, well it's really just... it's really come back because I've seen it as a as a meme or a shared yeah. thing now that we're talking about remote working and, and video conferencing. Um, I've seen it pop back up. So it's interesting. And I just want to tell you honestly that um yes, we were gonna use some humor today, but I am definitely in my pajama <laughs> pants. So <laughs> I just wanted to share that we all do this usually. Yeah, um, I'll show it off too. So I actually I do have a little makeup on, I've got a nice top. And then not not the fleece, but got my yoga pants on. Yay! <laughs> and, and I'm barefoot. <laughs> and that's one of the tricks for video conferencing and virtual meetings is that really, you know, you should be ready. And I always tell women, have a brush in your office, you know, throw your makeup, you know, have a little extra mascara or lipstick in your office. You can do it really fast if somebody says, hey, you want to jump on a call, but you really only have to have from the waist up. So that's really, that's kind of a cool thing. And benefit, yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. Yep. Lipstick and eyebrow pencil go a long way it, with these kinds of things. They do. A little they bit do. of powder. They yeah. do. And the other thing that, um, you know, this is just a quick tip. A lot of us have these blue, have glasses with a blue lens. I actually have two pair. So I have one without it for when I do calls on video and then one I have for when I work on the computer. So this is something that you can do for a long time. Maybe you're teaching or, you know, it's important the way you look. Um, it's just a little tip, you know, if you get a second pair, get one without the blue light. So you can use that um, because it does show up on camera. Right. Basically from the standpoint of how you look, think about how you would be if you were in a meeting in your workplace. You know, you'd be in your regular work gear, whether it's a suit or business casual or whatever, you know, you would show up professionally. Um, you know, you don't have to go nuts working from home, but put some effort into it. And, um, you know, some of it, the, the things we're going to talk about today are like lighting. Like, look at the three of us right now. We're also eye level, you know, and the lighting is good. You can hear us because we're using headsets. And so it makes the experience more pleasant when everybody's kind of doing, taking some, just some easy steps uh, to, to just make it come across great. Cause especially if you're going to be in a meeting for an hour, two hours, whatever um, it's, it's hard to look at people if, if there's like all this wonky stuff going on and that's what Sarah's going right. to um, walk us through. Oh, right. well, let's, 
Yeah, let's jump yeah. jump right into it. And I'm not going to show you my pants because I'm at a standing desk. Yeah. So, and I'm actually on a rocker board. So you may oh, see cool. that a little bit, which is kind of fun um, to keep things a little lively as you're standing. Um, yeah, all I was going to say, I, I would love to share later because um, the point that Kate already made, we're all at eye level. You're at a standing desk. So you obviously have a raise. Mm -hmm. I have my computer. I have a little like a little thing that I put on top of my desk that is like a, a, a way to hold my computer. And you must have your computer elevated as well, Kate, in no, order I to get to the eye level. I have a desk that can be cranked up to be standing or sitting because I like to do both, but it's also two tiered. Okay. So I have a tier. But basically when I used to have a regular desk, I just used um, books yeah. or some kind of a box. Um, mm -hmm. They actually at Staples, you can get like a stand that holds your laptop and it raises it up. But the whole point is you want your webcam eye level, yeah. not not this like down low kind of thing, which is what a lot of people do, or right. they look way up high like this. You know, you want it to be eye level. Right. Well, why don't we talk about camera position? We were, yeah. we're going to talk about it anyway. You know, it's what one of the reasons why we came up with this was that I was watching um, watching a group do sort of a panel discussion um, and little mini lecture. And um, there were so many people who I was seeing the can lights in their kitchen because they were leaning on their, they were leaning on their um, kitchen counter and leaning in like they're talking to their, their niece or their grandmother or their kid, right? And um, so we're seeing the ceiling. And of course, I started judging the sheet rocking on their ceiling, right? Because <laughs> right? someone else had their laptop in their lap and it looked like they were in a bunker <laughs> you know, with, with things. So um, what Kate was just talking about with the camera at eye level, um, most of our cameras, I know I'm using just my laptop camera. Oh my. Um, and sometimes if I'm using my cell phone or my iPad, there are times where I'll moderate um, a webinar from an iPad too. I do raise it up um, to eye level. And yeah. honestly, that's good ergonomics for us anyway, right? A lot of us are going to have these long meetings on video conference and you want to have your screen up anyway, especially if you're sharing documents if you're typing um and it also just gives you a chance yeah. to have your head up in your shoulders back right um, yeah. like you are actually sitting in a chair having a meeting right instead of getting really hunched over and that's going to put a lot of stress on your shoulders and your neck yeah and well and the, the other part about positioning is is when you have your laptop in your lap your camera moves right and right. so you want to have your you want to have your computer stable. Um, I used to use a laundry basket. I had these smaller laundry baskets, and I just had it on the back of my desk and put it on top. But I'm going to show you. I'm going to pick up my computer for a second. I'm just going to show people what I have. Um, it's a it's a little desk know. extender. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it just sits on top of my desk. I put it on the floor underneath my desk, and then when I have a meeting, um, I just. I just pop it on top and hands-free, I can type if I need to, you can adjust it. And um, it wasn't very expensive, but if you don't want to spend any money, a good box, a laundry basket upside down. Um, that's how, like I said, that's how I started for a while. You right. can also get these at Staples. They're like, and they tilt, they adjust mm -hmm. it so that you can, you know, adjust your thing. They're, they're like, I don't know, 30, 40 bucks. And obviously we don't want to be going out to the store, but you can certainly order these online. This is a brand called Fellows, F-E-L-L-O-W-E-S. And um, it, it's great if you decide you wanna work like from your dining room table. I also just wanted to add one thing to Sarah's thing about seeing the can lights on the ceiling. I had a painful um, client meeting a couple weeks ago where they were having it down low and the ceiling fan was going in the oh, back with a light oh, yeah. on it. Yeah. And I couldn't even look at him. First of all, he was haloed but the thing just kept going around and it was incredibly distracting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Um, right. You don't want people judging your couches and your furniture. <laughs> you want them to see you, right? I mean, make an effort to think about what's behind you. I mean, that's really the bottom line is, you know, I have a staged background because this is what I do for a living. You know, you could find a corner in your house where you could kind of just pay attention. Like, you know, Sarah's got herself strategically placed with a bookcase. Yep. She's made an effort to what's what's on her shelf. 
And my, um, I'm in, I'm in uh, transition. I actually okay. just emptied out um, my office. I had, this was a, um, a combined office guest room and I moved the bed out and all my furniture is on one side of the room. So my whole back wall right now is blank. So mm -hmm. I'm starting with a blank canvas um, and the angle. So I have a little window here that I've got to clean up, but I'm going to put something there, either a sheet that I can call it, come across or put a nice picture on. I have, like Kate, I have a thing that says uh, More in Media, which is the name of my company. Um, I might hang that on the wall, but I'm in the process of staging my wall. But if you don't have anything to stage or if you don't know, the best thing is a blank wall behind yep. you. We don't want you to, and the other thing you don't want to, and this is like applies to photography, is you don't want something that's going to look like it's growing out of the back of your head, like a lamp, like a floor lamp or something like that. You don't want any, frankly, light behind you. You don't want a window. You don't want a lamp, but you just don't want a plant or something growing out. So like you can see, I've got a couple plants. I've got a couple signs and I'm kind of placed in the middle. All I did was move a bookcase in from another room. Um, this is a, like a thing that I put my like computer paper in, but it makes like a place to put some of that stuff. You right. know, you don't have to go buy anything. You can use what you have, get creative with a corner. If you're going to be quarantined for several weeks or even two weeks, you know, if you can create a corner for yourself, it's actually going to feel good. It's going to feel like when you go into the office, like you have, um, a home or as Lisa Danforth called it the other day, like you've created a bunker. It's a safe place. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And of course, we do this professionally. We do trainings online. We do client meetings online. There are a lot of people, this is going to be temporary for you. And really all you need, like what Doreen set up, really something not terribly distracting behind right. you. And, um, and to show the people that you're working with, yes, I'm working. And no, I don't have a lot of stuff behind me um, trying to distract you. Um, from this. So you don't have to stage it like I stage it for STEM webinars. That's why I have, you know, textbooks and a microscope. And actually, if you look way over my shoulder, there's the lamp that I hide because it grows out of my head. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. And mine, mine is branded for me because my name of my business is standing out online and I have my little hashtag chalkboard sign. So, you know, this is different, but I, because I do this with my clients and I want it to look professional, but it also makes me feel good. So let's go from, and I know that Sarah, I know you're moderating, but while we're yeah. on location, um, lighting becomes important because I don't just have a, a window here. It's a small window um, and I have to get um, a cover for it. Um, but I also have a window right here and it's great because it guts lights on my face, except it's starting to be to the point where another half hour and that light's going to be shining right on me. So right. timing of your um of your meetings and where you sit because we recommend sitting in front of a window we've all right. said that that's when the natural light falls of you so i'm kind mm -hmm. of in front of a window it's not quite here but it's right there um so there's certain times of the day and i did that today that i closed the curtain a little bit because that sun's going to come in and then it's not going to be right so i do have a lamp um so if you don't have um, a wall with a window you could put a lamp behind your camera. That also helps. And it should be the night, the, the right kind of light. And you had some uh, su suggestions, Sarah. If you don't have like a, a light to put on your desk, you could hang, what were you saying? Christmas? I said holiday. Yeah, holiday, holiday. lights. Those little white the, holiday the, lights. The warm white, the warm white. The, yeah, not the warm, warmish blue light because a lot of people have earth tones in their homes and that casts this yellow glow on you. And sometimes that can just make you look drawn out and tired and people wonder, are you okay? Um, <laughs> so those little lights, those little you know, virus. Um, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, exactly. right, little humor come up. Yeah. Those little lights can mimic a little bit more daylight for you. And Doreen, I have the same issue. I have I I face the south, and because I'm standing right now, the sun is above my my curtains. But I have these little magnetic blinds that I can move, move up and down. And if I need to, I can even mask it a little bit more with um 
like a file folder that's open. I mean, literally, you can just tape it up onto your window if you need yeah. to. Too. So that's, that's a good tip. I have vertical blinds and they're not all the way closed right now. So I have some light coming in, but it's still blocking it. But right. give me a little bit longer and it's going to like shine right on me. So right. Um, right. yeah, timing is important when you do it. Know where the sun is when you're in front of the window, but there's nothing like natural window exactly. lighting. What I do is I actually have my desk, which is like this, and I'm perpendicular to my window, which is right here, but I have it. Um, I'll just kind of show you here. I sort of, it's, it's, it's right yeah. here. So okay. I get, I get the light sort of from the side. So if you can see here how brighter it is here and it's a little darker here, but I have a lamp on my desktop, just a regular old table lamp that I got at like the Christmas tree shop. So anything you have, that has a light shade, which gives me a little bit of light on this side. And then I actually do have a ring light, but again, I do this for a living. And so I, and I, I do videos and sometimes I have a green screen behind me. So I need um, a regular light. If I tip my head up, you can see the ring light probably reflecting in my glasses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I have, yeah. time. but really between the lamp and the natural light, I'm good to go. Right. Um, because, and then I don't have like this big sh hot shiny thing in my face from right. some, from like too bright a light. So um, right. having the natural light from the side also works. Right, and really the point is to be seen, to be seen and heard. We're gonna talk about audio in just a second, but you want to be participating in these meetings. You want people to see your facial expressions. This is why we're using the video conferencing and not just conference calls, right? Where people can be painting their nails or doing their dishes. Not that I've ever done that. <laughs> Well, video allows you to see the nuances that you would have that if you were right. in the face. I mean, you can, you you know, if somebody said something and you couldn't see them, you can take it a whole different way than it may have been intended. And right. so this is why the video piece is so important because you can, and if you can see people, you'll feel more connected to the meeting and you'll want to stay, um, uh, you'll want to stay engaged. If you can't see and hear people well, you start to just kind of like, it just like doesn't work. You can't right. be connected. Right. And, and, you know, the things that we're talking about, camera position, lighting, we're going to talk about headsets in a moment. Um, these are things that we can control. We can't always control the dog barking. I think people are going to be much more lenient about the dogs barking, the, um, the kids in the background, your noisy neighbors who decide now is the time to use the nail gun, right? Or so, the garbage truck shows up. Or the garbage truck shows up or the sirens or whatever. So because we're all working remotely now this stuff is going to happen. But these are the things that we can um, that we can take control of and um, and make a little bit better so yeah. that you're seen and heard and you're participating well in these meetings that we're all going to be having more and more and more. Yeah. Right? So um, talking about dogs, I have four dogs and I, of course, have my door closed, but I just heard mine bark uh, because I didn't lock them up. Normally they they sleep in crates and I would lock them, but my kids are in the living room. So I figure I'd leave them out with the kids and I just heard them. So, yes, that's something that happens. I also have older kids, but they're in the living room. And I did tell them I'm going to close the door. There's a sign on the door, live video. Don't come in. So they know. So if you are working from home, remotely and you need to get on these meetings removing yourself into a place where you can close the door put a big sign even a five-year-old or four-year-old understands the difference you know if you have a if you create like a stop sign yeah. or like a like a traffic light and put the right light on you know the right the the red light on and say stop you know like mom's on the phone like it's a big a red yeah it's, it's, a right. a vis it's a visual I used to have visuals I actually used to have a whiteboard on my door where I would write it on there and say I'm on a live phone call you know I just before I close the door I put that on there but mm -hmm. for smaller children you know if you have that, that that traffic light a big red one and a big green one and that way they know and they, they they would stop. And the other thing that I told, I, this was a, this was a tip. I used to know exactly how long every Disney movie was. Like some are an hour and 20 minutes, some are an hour. And I, if I had to get a task done, including live video, I would, I would steer them towards like, if I had an hour and a half worth of stuff, I'd be like, let's watch this movie because I knew it was like an hour and 45 minutes and I knew I would get the task done if they would just sit there with that movie and then I would come out. So knowing, you know, knowing, understanding your kids, their habits, you know, being clear, being upfront about um, what you're doing, that will help you with your video conferencing. If you say, I'm going to be, I'm just going to go on this conference and they have no idea whether it's five minutes, 15 minutes or an hour and a half, 
that's when they'll come in. But if you say it's going to be the duration of this movie or two shows and you give them a snack, they should be fine. So yeah. that's really, you know, setting up this expectations from the people around you. Um, just like you should know when the sun comes in through your window, you probably know when the garbage man's coming. You might not know when UPS is coming, but you know some of those things. My garbage men used to come on Friday. Now I have a new house to come on Monday. I know not to go on a video conference call at the time <laughs> that he's coming. So, you know, if you have any control, those are the things that you should think about. One right. thing I'll add to that is um, I actually, again, because I work from home and I have really fr friends who are neighbors and stuff like that, and they will pop by, is I have a sign that I put up. I keep it st literally taped on my door, and then it says, on a video call, please do not disturb or knock. And I stick it on the glass and I put the shade down and they know I'm I'm working. Um, the other thing with the dog is my dog is with me in my office. When I know I'm going to be on a video call, I take his collar off just so that the jingling's not happening. Now, I'm not saying that the, if these things happen, it's the end of the world, but you're just reducing friction. So just kind of, you know, think of it that way. And um, the other thing that you can do, you know, if you're wearing a headset, you know, if the garbage truck does show up, at least it's not as loud as like when I'm using my professional mic um, and I'm not wearing a headset, then that obviously happens. So I have to I have to be judicious and careful about when I schedule those those things as well. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and um, I was going to say the other thing to that is that somebody just asked what we were using. We're using StreamYard. But if you're using a Facebook Live or a Zoom you, every single person who's on the conference call has a mute button. So <laughs> you should know where that is, that when yeah. noise starts coming or a child comes in or there's a knock at your door, you mm -hmm. can excuse yourself, mute, and then go take care right. of business. And if you're right. using Zoom, you can mute and you can turn off your video. One of the things if you're using Zoom is when you go in to put your account in, you can put like up a headshot so that when you, you take yourself off video, your headshot is there. So people know that you're still like connected and on the call and you'll be back momentarily. I mean, there's a lot of things that are sort of forgivable. Um, and so, but if you have it, you know, look professional, then then that's good too. Because sometimes if you don't have the headshot, it looks like a blank screen and then people will be like, is Joe still on the call? Um, so, you know, it's worth just throwing up a headshot and your name and, and stuff like that in the file. Right. Right. And for someone who's had a, an upper respiratory infection for the last two weeks, um, I use these. They're called Fisherman's Friends. And they let me talk. You're going to see me keep popping these um, throughout this session, but it allows me to talk without coughing. So a funny thing is um, about a week ago, I was doing a few more video calls and I kept turning away to cough away from the people that were on the camera. <laughs> So, I know well, I just I coughed just earlier like, and I still coughed into my sleeve. It's just, you know, it's habit. Yep. Yep. When you work from home, you can touch your face. Right? I, <laughs> um, I was just taking a look over at the chat and um, I can't see the chat. I mean, it's on my account and I can't even see the chat. So I don't know why I can't. I'm using my second screen, which is another yeah. tip. Yeah, I'm, I'm using, using my Facebook. Screen. Okay. Yeah. You guys yeah. will have to watch that because I, I can sure. see 10 people on. Thank you all for being here. Yep. Yes, we've so got Vivian, some people. We do have a few comments. Vivica Ron, Von Rosen Martin was saying, um, Hi, that, yeah, she used a trash bin at a hotel a few weeks ago. Um, she also is a little more perfect. I think if anybody's followed Vivica, she does amazing webinars. She does right? video and she does it awesome. Hey, Viv, yeah. remember when you used to have that sheet that hung behind she you? She said that she has a green screen, actually. Yeah, but she used so. to have a sheet that was like a bed sheet with the world on it. Oh, really? <laughs> I hope she's so, laughing. It looks like that's pretty much. Some folks are saying, "Great, see, see you, fantastic." Um, and Suzanne was asking about Streamyard versus Facebook Live, and we'll um, we can talk about platforms. But we keep dancing around my absolute favorite topic when it comes to conference calls and video conference, and that's headsets. I have this headset. I have a, yeah, I have a landline and I have a headset for my landline and I also have a headset for my cell phone. So headsets are crucial. Even if everybody, if it's a casual conversation that you're having with a coworker, you just have a line open. Some of us are doing this now too, is just having a, a Zoom line open so that as questions are coming up, it's almost like sharing an office. I share an office um, for one of my gigs and it's like having that other person there so we can, um, 
throw ideas back and forth and interrupt each other as if we were working together. Um, so that's one scenario. But really, if you're having a, a meeting, you want to contribute, other people are on the call, having a headset, using using the call-in number sometimes. Skype is really bad sometimes with audio. Um, so using that call-in number is really helpful um, because not everybody is gonna hear you. You know, vision, um, hearing loss, vision loss, these are some of the things that a majority of Americans have, people worldwide have too, because I know we're talking to some people overseas, thanks to Doreen. Um, and um, it's just common courtesy, sort of like being at a big conference and using the microphones, right? Because people may not hear some of the subtleties, they may not hear someone else trying to break in. And so having this clear audio is really, really helpful. I mean, everybody's phone comes with a headset, right? We all get these little things. Doreen's actually using hers right now. Yeah. Yes. So, um, so you can get fancy. Kate has a, a wireless one. I have a wired one and I just put the wire behind my back. So if I'm wearing light colored clothing, no one sees the wire. I mean, I'm dark. Right now. Share the brand names because people have asked me already when I promoted this, what types of stuff I use. So sure. the one I'm using is actually a Logitech mm -hmm. 800 Bluetooth wireless. So it actually comes with one of those little, those little things that you put in a USB port. If you want to go, um, if you want to just go wireless, but if you want to go Bluetooth, there's a setting on here that goes Bluetooth, and then it just pairs with your laptop, but it can also pair with your phone. And what I like about the headsets that are designed for this, now if you look at me right now, you can't even tell that there's a mouthpiece right here. Mm -hmm. Like you can't, you can kind of see it, but it's not like it's obliterating my face like this. You know, it's not like one of those broadcast sports announcer things. So, right. you know, and, and, and it's right here. So same with Sarah. It's like, Sarah, if you look at, Sarah, turn your head. Yep. Um, yeah, mine's right here. Mine's a, mine's a Seinhauser. And these pick up a lot of sounds. Like when I'm in an office building, you can hear someone closing the door behind me. You can sometimes you can pick up other conversations. Um, but I, I really like this. I also like the headband because if I'm on a call for more than half an hour, earbuds start to start to weigh on my ear yeah, they hurt my sense, mm -hmm. you know so having the headband actually relieves some of that tension so things aren't hanging off of your ears even my landline one is an over the ear kind of deal let's get that behind white um so um that after the brand about, on that you know, if people want to look for it this is a panasonic okay if i if anybody finds this again tell me because I can't replace it. It's lost little fuzzy thing. I've used headsets for about 20 years. Um, and I've always, always, always used headsets with telephones um, through most of my professional career. And it really, I have head, neck, arm, hands, wrist, all that kind of issues. So it really gives you a chance to sit up. It almost feels like you're talking to someone one-on-one, -on -one, even though you're talking on the phone. Okay, um, we've got a couple questions coming in about headsets. Why don't we tell everybody, uh, if you're watching this and listening live, that at the end, um, all of us will go in and type out exactly what type we have because they're asking for brands and names. So sure. guys, we'll give you uh, what Sarah's using, what Kate's recommending. Um, and I'm just going to jump in here. I use the one that came with my phone. I actually have three different ones. I, when I, tra I travel a lot, I'm in the car a lot. And I'm not doing video conferencing in the call, but I'm doing phone calls in the call. So I, in the car, so I always have a headset with me. One of the tricks that I use is I'm going to go grab it. I have a bunch of these um, extra um, glass cases, and when I travel, here's another pair of my glasses. When I travel, um, I label these and I'll say headsets, um, dongles, cords, and I use these, so I have access to all that different equipment when I go. Um, but I just like my little little sets. They don't hurt my ears. I run with these. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the things that I want to say that a lot of people now have these wireless ones that are like the little, the pods. Yeah. Um, I, I see them. I, my kids have them. Uh, I see people ski with them. The only thing that I don't like about that is, is that you don't 
you, to the point that you don't see them when you're out and about, that you're having a conversation with people and you, you don't realize that they're on a phone call. So um, that doesn't necessarily make as much of a difference when you're doing video calling, but just be aware that you, if you do end up getting AirPods and, and when you're out and about and you're making phone calls that people might have that conversation with you because they don't realize that you're, that you're using those because they are almost invisible. I had to really get used to them. I didn't like the way they looked, having little white things sticking out of your ears. Um, but you know, I just, I'm old fashioned that way. And I, I've stuck with this just because it works. Um, mm -hmm. I'm assuming that if I lose my three headsets that I have at some point, I'll get something bigger. Um, I don't, I haven't had an issue with audio. So if you're watching this and you're going to be home for four to six weeks and you don't want to invest, this works. Just right. wanted to throw that out there as well. Sometimes right. what I've noticed though, cause I've used the earbuds, you know, that came with my phone too. And if some sometimes the the mic ends up being crackly or it doesn't work right, so I would just highly suggest if you're going to use any kind of earbuds, have a backup pair just in case something's wonky. You can just at least switch out in the middle of a call and have a backup. Um, Sarah and Doreen, I had a question um, on text from Bob Farnham. I don't know if he's still on, saying where do I ask questions. Oh, so, Bob, you know, it's funny. Bob is actually asking questions on Facebook. So I've got okay, so you've got open. So he's being yeah. cared for. He is Bob. being cared for. And he actually just typed in um, hardwired earphones and mic are worth it. So, um, and but I want to reiterate what Doreen said. A lot of people um, are working from home. This isn't going to be a permanent thing. You don't have to invest a lot. You know, we're talking about all these risers. I'll post some pictures of what my desk looks like. But, you know, five years ago, I started working from home. So, yeah, I invested in an elevating yep. um, standing sitting desk. I invested in some of these risers for my laptops and things like that. Um, I have a huge screen on my desk. So um, I know for some people, especially the screen, um, is something you're really gonna miss when you leave your office. So um, that's something you may want to invest in. So, um, yeah. Um, so the other thing I do, what, what we were gonna, um, was there something else about mics that we're gonna talk about I, that I'm forgetting? Yeah, let me just um, take a look. I think the in the end, you know, use what you have, right? Absolutely. But know that your laptop microphone may not cut it. And right. people will be nice to you, but to really be courteous, to be accessible, you know, to be inclusive of people who may be hearing impaired. And you may not even know this. One right. of my sisters um, lost half of her hearing when she was 40. So, you know, she's a triathlete. You would never expect that kind of thing. But, you know, there's these hidden things that people have that are going to start coming up. And if you really want to be inclusive, and you and you want to be heard too, right? Those district dis, distant microphones that are on laptops. Sometimes you get an echo from it. Um, people are just going to start tuning you out, and you really want to be heard. Um, the other thing you had on the outline, um, and I'm just going to jump in here. I oh, use okay. the one that came I'm with sorry. my phone. Distant <laughs> I think the live stream came on my phone. Yeah, no, the live stream came it's back. Like, yeah. people, this is live. This is this is the stuff that happens. Yeah. Um, one of the things you mentioned that we haven't talked about, Sarah, is Wi-Fi connection. Yeah, we haven't really talked about Wi-Fi connection, and we were actually just talking about that as we were getting going this morning because one of us were freezing for the others, and um, as the capacity, I know that some of the some of the um, internet carriers have been lifting their caps. They're not going to, um, you know, they're not going to limit how much we're streaming right now. But there are going to be these little bugs, and and just in general, being forgiving of that. You know, not everybody's yeah. going to have the fastest Wi-Fi at home. Not everybody's going to have the best cell phone plan to be able to stream everything all the time, right? So being forgiving of that, just like the dogs and the kids who may interrupt from time to time being forgiven that the the technology may need to catch up with us a little right bit. and if you have kids we're gonna have a couple glitches on this and i mean you just gotta like gotta just kind of push through like don't just disconnect because there was a glitch give it right, some right. time people always come back they might be frozen for a moment but um they usually always come back and if right. you have kids working from home you know a lot of kids millions 32 million and rising kids are at home. They are supposed to be online. They're supposed to do doing homework. Um, 
time if you can, time your online video conferencing and video streaming at a different time that they need to be on. Because right. when we used to have only um, dial up and broadband, um, that was a real issue. Um, so yeah. use an ethernet if you have it, um, an ethernet cable um, to, to boost your Wi-Fi. Now at this point I have um, fast lightning EC fiber where I live in Vermont. Um, so we really had no issue. Um, but when you have a lower level or lower tier of a normal Wi-Fi, um, and then you have several people on there, basically just divides it. So you might want to say to your teenager, hey, get off of YouTube, get off of PlayStation. I'm going to go do some live streaming. So be aware of that, especially as we're all home with our kids, um, or a lot of us are, or with a partner who might be working from home. Yes. Don't try to do that at the same time. Just be conscious right. of that, of that timing for yeah. for that. And I think um, anytime you go live, you should test. You should test your Wi-Fi. You should test your audio. Mm -hmm. You should test your camera angle of your camera. All of those things. And and Wi-Fi is really part of that. Bob Farnham just posted. Um, Speedtest.net shows your download and more importantly, your upload speed. Also, uh, www.fast.com hosted by Netflix. Yep. Yeah. So um, speedtest.net or yep. fast.com. Right. So those are ways to, the other thing is too, is just think about like all the um, other things you have open that might be drawing for on your, on your desktop or phone. But again, right. the kids, you know, maybe they go watch the Disney movie on, on some other device versus on Netflix. Yep. Um, yeah. And or maybe, they do their lesson plans. They do their lesson plans while no, you're on your video conference. Right. right? Yeah. The other thing you could do is call your internet provider and see if it's, you know, how much it would cost to upgrade your your speed um, for a month or two. Because And then you can just downgrade. I'm sure that a lot of people are doing that. I mean, since I work from home, I invest in fiber because I do a lot of this and I do files. So you don't all need fiber. But you know, you might want to bump it up from twelve to twenty-five or something, and you could probably do that for a month or two. So right. um, those are some things to think about too. Right. Yeah. Right. But you know what? There's a huge draw on the overall system. Period. <laughs> and I just think we're gonna. You know, I'm I'm used to having glitches anyway. There's certainly been a lot more in the last two to three days. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, I, the, something that we didn't really discuss is we're talking about laptops and putting the laptops on on um, our desk and having these things. But there are people that might work on a computer but don't have a good webcam and might, um, you know, want to use their phone for video conferencing because it's easy to just click a link and get there. The mm -hmm. one rec recommended thing that I would tell you, and, and then again, if you do that, then a headset like I have is very easy to plug in. But one of the things I would recommend is for for a phone, especially, is to station, you know, to make it to stabilize it. So mm -hmm. again, your phone, if you don't have a phone tripod, they're ten dollars on Amazon. I'm sure they're available, but you can lean it against something. When you lean it, very usually when you lean something, it leans back. So then you get that under chin. So don't do that. You know, make right. sure it leans forward or what well, Kate, I have one in a drawer over uh, next to me, a little tripod and position it right. But do not when you video conference, hold your right. um, phone. It just, right. you, you want to talk with your hands up there, Sarah's. Um, right. You want right. to have it stable and you want to be able to type or write notes. So, right. so position that again, put that I level. On, I level, put that on top of a basket, on top of a counter, attach it to a kitchen cabinet, wherever your little corner is. But um, I know we were talking about laptops before, but if you're doing this from your phone, make sure you stabilize that. Right. I would say use command strips. You know those Velcro command oh, yeah. strips? Yeah. Just stick them on the back, stick one on your laptop or your your desktop screen, wherever you need to do it. And that way you can just pull it off and put There's it There's also, um, Staples carries these. It's a brand, it's called Handle. H-A-N-D-A-D-L, and it's got this great little thing that could actually be something that you hold your phone with, and it's really strong elastic, or it pops in and it makes like a stand. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I use that, you can, they, Staples carries them. This is um, an Archon mounts. Again, we'll, after this is over, we'll put all of the things we've talked about in the um, comments. This doesn't weigh anything, but it bends, you know, so like if you wanted to, wrap it around a railing or something like that, you've got that capability and it spreads out. 
Gorilla is another brand. They're more expensive. This is like 19 bucks. Yeah, I have yeah. one, but I just want to point out the one that you showed with the, um, with the sand. That's yes. great. Yeah, that's great. Except then you have it leaning backwards. So even, you know, cause you'll have that, you want to lift it and push it forward a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. Or, or you can wrong. put it on the side and yeah. you use it as a stand and it doesn't yeah. touch as much. Yeah. Um, this one has more of an, if it use it like this vertically, yeah. it tips more, but use it like this. It's more like a prop. Yeah. And, and right. you can do it either way. A couple of questions. Um, we did cover this. Mary Claire asked about uh, muting your audio. So um, we talked about like if you're using Zoom or so any of the streaming that you're using, have some kind of an icon with where you can mute your mic. Yes. Right. You know, if you're in listen only mode, you should just mute your mic and speak, unmute it, speak, and then mute it again. Um, so I just wanted to here. cover that again. Yep. Right. And Bob, Bob, Bob said my download speed is 400 megabytes. Upload is 20. What's yours? I'll have to look. I don't know. That's I'm because Bob is awesome. Uh, I know. Uh, well, Bob, Bob is another great resource too. Bob does a lot of streaming video. Um, He's really great about doing a lot of public events and things like that. So he's right. another good resource that you guys should connect with him on Facebook. He's also known as Bob the Green Guy. Bob the Green Guy. So, so, yeah. so I have a question for you ladies. Um, this yep. is not on our little um, paper that we got ready, but how long does it take you ready? How long, say you have a call at 11 like we did today. How much time do you take to get ready for a video conferencing call? The including makeup or no makeup? <laughs> no, including makeup, hair, get, you know, throw on something. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. How yeah, I, hair? Want to make up, I make sure I look presentable. Um, you know, sometimes with, you know, all, the other thing is too, is, you know, if you've got long hair, throw it up in a, in a ponytail or something. I mean, you don't have to like, you don't have to look go gorgeous, you know, <laughs> um, but just look, you know, don't look like you rolled out of bed. <laughs> I'd say 10 right. minutes. The other thing is, I always go on a little bit early because I just want to make sure the tech is working. I mean, sure. I, I do five Zoom calls a day um, yeah. and, and I still test two minutes before, just I always test my speaker. Um, the other thing is I use um, a professional mic that I have on a boom arm. So I always test that, you know, I don't always use the headset. It depends on my, um, my dynamic that I need to have. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like if I'm recording a video for a tutorial, I'm using all my professional equipment, my green screen and all of that. So my, my stuff is different. So I'd say 10 minutes, including makeup. If I don't care about makeup, um, it takes me three minutes maybe to prep. How about you, Sarah? All right. Well, I, I think we're going to talk about this a little bit too. Just some general tips about working from home is that I get ready for the day and, um, um, so it can take me anywhere from three minutes to if I really want to put on makeup, like I put on makeup today, um, and picked out something to wear. It's, it's basically the time it takes me to get ready for work. So I really see this as getting ready for work time. Right. Yep. Um, and so, you know, 20 minutes, I guess, but like Kate, I often do test. I actually log into, I start a new meeting in zoom just to see where my camera is and to make sure that my, um, connection to my to my headset and my microphone are working well. And then when I actually join the meeting, I test it. You can test the audio in the background without anybody really knowing it. Um, and uh, and then I can light up my camera. One thing I would ask too is that if I would hope that your employers or the people that have asked you to work, you know, by video conference, I hope they've sent you like instructions. Like Zoom has great instructions with the test point so that you can test it before you use it. If they right. haven't sent you something like that, reach out to them and say, could you please send us out instructions? Um, and, and then you can test your own mic on your webcam or your phone or whatever. Uh, and it takes just, it takes like five seconds. Mary Claire must have just joined in later. She asked about lighting. Mary Claire, we have covered that. So um, if you want to watch in the replay later, we totally covered lighting on natural light and um, art artificial light. But right. And, Su and Suzanne Johnson had asked about camera position too. And, and Suzanne, you can watch the replay where we talk about camera position. Yep. But I um, Kate, it's important, Suzanne. Yeah, exactly. And Kate, you brought up a, a good point about the instructions and something that we were going to talk about platforms too. And, you know, I cannot listen to people trying to find the button anymore, right? We all have to use these platforms go through the tutorial, it's, 
show up like you're going to show up at a meeting, right? If you're going to a meeting, you know you're going to be taking notes. Um, you come with pen and paper, right? So come to a video conference having tested the platform. Um, and I know sometimes people are going to on the fly throw in something weird that you've never used before, like um, Microsoft Teams or something like that. Um, so there might be a little bit of a learning curve there, but find out ahead of time the links that you get for the meeting invites, tell you what platform it's on. So learn to use it. It really only takes about five to 10 minutes to learn this. Doesn't matter what your technology skills are. And you don't have to download software. A lot of people think you have to download software. You don't need to. And there's a very simple trick to do doing this. Learn this. You can also get Kate or Sarah or myself, you're friends with us, you're watching this, say, mm -hmm. hey, my boss or you know, my work is requiring me, I know you know how to do this. Would you jump on a Zoom with me so we can practice this? Absolutely. It'll take five minutes, we are all willing to do that. I've already done that, I actually got my whole right. family, I got my family in the Netherlands on Zoom yesterday, it was my birthday, my mom had never been on, she's 75, she got on Zoom, they got the audio figured out, my sister got it figured out, and it was so fun and we got like nine, 10 people together, but just having that patience. But if you, if it's important for work, go practice with somebody who does know how to do this before the time of the meeting. So yeah, do it the night before or early in the morning. Right. My son just got instructions yesterday. He goes to a tech school and they're going to be working virtually and he's never done a video conference call. Um, so uh, I told him, you know, like, Let's just test it with me first. That's fine. And yeah. we did. And, you know, it's awkward. The other thing, speaking of awkward moments, which we're trying to re reduce, is a lot of people also feel like they have to talk into their actual camera. Um, and the only time I think you need to do that is like for me or maybe Doreen, when we're producing a professional video, we do need to look at the camera because we want to look at our viewer. You don't have to feel that way, especially if you're looking at a lot, a bunch of little thumbnails of people's faces on Zoom for the call. You know, we all tend to look at the person because we're used to eye contact. It's fine to do that. I do have one fun little tip that if you do need to ever look into your camera and it's awkward to look into that little teeny tiny dot of a lens, I found these fabulous post-its. <laughs> <laughs> They're emoji post-its. I got them in at Target. I cut a little hole in the middle and I place it over the hole on my lens. And then I'm like looking at that big emoji and it's much easier to make eye contact with that if I am in that place where I feel like I really need to be looking at the video That's camera. awesome, I love that tip. So, That's great. Um, great. And I think that, let's see, Post-it actually makes them. They're emoji Post-its. <laughs> That's great. And I just cut a hole in the middle. Yeah. That's great. Um, so grooming, I, I was going to say, um, Kate said 10 minutes, you said 20 minutes. Um, I usually do not get dressed in the morning. Uh, my kids, my child normally goes to school, catches the bus and I'm in my office. So when I do have to do these meetings and I have to be dressed, it does take me a few minutes. But what I used to do when I had a lot of video meetings, um, I had a wardrobe in my old office and I just had a couple different tops, couple different earrings. And so I would just have them ready and I could literally just throw off my robe and put a put any kind of shirt on and put some earrings in. I had a hairbrush and makeup in my office. So it was like a really quick, like almost like a quick makeover um, to, mm -hmm. to be ready. Cause I don't, and then the other trick to do that is, um, and this is something that, you know, if your work mandates when you go on and might not necessarily, but if you're the one scheduling these meetings, do them all in one day. Do as many, I usually, Tuesday is my video day. I have um, a 10 o'clock, a one o'clock, a two o'clock, they're standing meetings. I know I get dressed that day. I know I'm going to be on camera that day. And like today I'm scheduling one for tomorrow because I already have one tomorrow. So the person I'm scheduling with, he goes, I can do Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'm like Thursday, because I'm already going to be dressed. I'm already going to have a meeting. I'm already going to do all that. So when you can batch your video conferencing on the day that you're already looking good and feeling good, then that also saves you a little bit of time. So I wanted to throw those tips out there as well. Right. You brought up something else that just made me think of it. And I think Sarah had it on her, on her agenda is um, taking breaks. So with the kind of virtual work you're going to be doing, you could easily be seeing yourself doing two, three, five meetings a day on virtual. Um, one of the things that you can ask, and granted, you might be working for somebody who's dictating the schedule. I get it. 
but try to factor in at least five minutes to go walk the, to go let your dog out or to go get water, or go to the bathroom, mm -hmm. get, you know, it's okay to have coffee next to you or water or whatever. People are going to be, you do that in a meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so don't, so don't worry about it, but schedule time for a break. You know, sometimes when I'm doing coaching, coaching is just a lot of like brain work, you know, it's a lot of connection and talking. I, um, I try to take at least a half an hour in between just because I need to like, clear my head, you know? Mm -hmm. So taking, it's it's easy to just go, oh, I got a call two to three, and then you schedule the one for three, and then it's three to four, and then, you know, come six o'clock or whatever, and you're like, oh my God, I've been talking for three straight hours at this, at this, like, mm -hmm. you know, computer or phone. It's, um, it's a different kind of exhaustion. Um, and, and, and it might sound like first world problems, but it is, it's different. It's just a different dynamic. And especially if you haven't done it before, it's going to take some getting used to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Self-care. Yeah. even if Exactly. It's and remember, if you were in an office, you get up and go get a glass of water or make a cup of coffee or eat your lunch, right? This can be part of your work day at home as well. So I just have to acknowledge Jason Lorber. He says, your talk has inspired me to revamp my office. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Great, Jason. Jason. Yeah. yeah. Ne Thank next you. time, next time we're going to do something together, I'll have a different background and a different setup. So I'm excited <laughs> to, to do something new. I'm thinking about putting a sheet here or some kind of backdrop. Um, but yeah, like that's, it's fun. It's fun to, to do something there. But I think that, um, the most important thing is that you have that eye contact that you're familiar with the, mm -hmm. the software that you're going to use that um, your uh, computer or your screen is elevated. The camera is at eye level. Um, you don't lean over. You have a smile. You're ready with, with pen and paper. You're ready to take a meeting. Your hands are free. So your computer screen is stationary. Those are really the, and, and your audio is good. Those are really mm -hmm. the most important things. And that avoids a lot of awkward moments. And then uh, we talked about this when we started, lots of humor, right? If your dog does come in or your cat sneaks in and they get on, on your camera or you just happen to have a child that knocks on the door, you know what? We're all human. And that's, exactly. that's much more easily forgiven than you going, where is that button? Like you were saying right. earlier, right. you know, right. that's your personal responsibility and the outside world, we can't control everything. It's how you react to, to it is that that is what we can control. It's, it's right. about, you know, being yourself. Um, can you all still hear me? Yeah. yeah. So these just died. So note to self, Kate Payne, make sure you charge these <laughs> well in advance. Right. Um, and so I've just switched to my my regular uh, external microphone. But if you don't have an external microphone, which most of you would not, um, obviously, if you have if something like that happens with those Bluetooth or wireless, then um, you can you'll you'll be forced to use your regular mic on your laptop. And that's right. not the end of the world. Right. Um, or you could use earbuds. I just they bug my ears, so I don't use them. And I've got my my mic. So hopefully you all can still hear me. OK. Yeah, we can hear you. Great. But um, and talking about what Doreen was just talking about, too, is that the point of having these video conference calls is to connect with people when we're not together in an office. So you can make it fun and you can. I've seen some pictures of people having costume parties like like um, office costume parties when yep. they go onto the link. And then I have fun things like I have little <laughs> ears that I'll put on. I have wait. This is the best. I have Doreen's glasses. Yay! Oh, I have Doreen's glasses too. Yeah. Uh, so, I, and yes. someone, I, as I recall, someone just wrote a pretty good blog piece I about them off my glasses. Of working from home, so we can put on Doreen's Doreen's glasses as she talks about her blog post about working from home. Yeah. So um, uh, actually, was, you know, just just a little interjection here. Yesterday was Doreen's. 50th birthday, everybody. So woo, happy birthday to Doreen. Yay. And and I used the platform online Zoom to connect with my family in the Netherlands who obviously couldn't come visit um, to connect with my 75 year old mom who were having a conversation. Um, I invited my friends for an eight o'clock wine um, bring your own booze um, meeting. Um, I had a lunch meeting with a bunch of friends. You guys came both at noon. That was so fun. A friend mm -hmm. from France joined. Um, I had people from all over the world join. So you can use this 
um, for fun things. So next week, I'm going to host our book club that we normally host at the local pub online. So mm -hmm. this technology is allowing us to really connect. But I was in social media marketing world just a few weeks ago, which is um, held in San Diego every year. year. And this was um, over 4,000 social media professionals. Um, and so as I came back and the fear of this coronavirus started um, to spread along with the coronavirus. Um, I wrote a blog post about working remote. People started telling me, you know, how, how, if this is gonna be a reality, how do you do that? And so I got 30 plus of my marketing friends who do this all the time. Um, Kate contributed to it. Um, to, I was masked. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. Um, to to give to give me a tip and i was able to compile an in incredible resource so um when this is over i will post that link to that blog post in the comments so you can read and it was it's a wide variety of people from all over the world philippines and uk and australia and the netherlands and people have all these ideas of if you are forced to work remote how to make it work when you have kids and when you have pets and it's not just about setting up the screen what we did but really how to, how to how to navigate the new world of remote working we actually so, have somebody from the philippines on our call jomar oh okay we just, we just jumped yeah. on yep um because yeah. i'm i'm streaming yeah. off my facebook business page and i have a lot of uh connections for people from from all over the world so thanks that's for joining awesome. us that's, that's awesome what, um, one thing i was just going to carry on from what doreen was saying is um you know you can use skype you can use zoom there's other tools so there's Google Hangouts. Uh, you know, I have Office Teams, Microsoft Office Teams. I just heard about. Yep. Yeah. And you can have I call it virtual wine. So if you can't meet up with your girlfriends or your friends mm -hmm. to do it, you know, um, eight o'clock at night or seven o'clock at night. Um, I have a good friend. Uh, I don't know if she's even on, but a lot of people know Jen Herman, who's like the Instagram, um, you know, really well known Instagram expert. And she and I are personal friends. And so once a month we do a virtual wine and we literally have our wine and we we just chat. So, you know, during this time of uh, being closed in and uh, talk about the ultimate form of social distancing, you know, this, this is it. And so it doesn't have to just be work. Um, right. You can do this, you can connect with family. If people are self isolating, like, and you wanna check in, um, I, you know, a, a one thing I intended to do because my mom lives in an independent living facility was I was gonna go over and get her set up with Zoom or Skype so that I could check in on her and see her face. I didn't get over there and they're on lockdown. So now I can't, I can't go over. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, this is something that you can be thinking about using in other ways that is not necessarily work related. And then yeah. if you want to have, if you want to have your, your laptop set up to show your double chin and all that, go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I wanted to, I wanted to do, post something else and I have like three minutes and I've got to jump off because I do yeah. have um, another commitment. But one of the things we didn't talk about is meeting etiquette. And I just want to That's stress right. that when you are online in a meeting like we are, and this is a work professional type meeting, that the same etiquette rules do apply as if you were in the room together. Excellent so point. you should not pick your nose or, <laughs> you know, uh, scratch yourself in odd places or let out gas or things that people can see and do. You might have this sense, I'm in this room by myself, but the same etiquette, things that you wouldn't do in a real life meeting, you should not do in a virtual meeting. And I just kind of wanted to point that out because mm -hmm. I think, that when people are behind this screen, they, we know this word like you know screen warriors. We think that we're in, you know, that we're invincible and 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 that we can say and do things that um, might you might never do in real life. But um, meeting etiquette still applies whether you're virtual Absolutely. or real, and giving each other the courtesy of speaking, maybe mm -hmm. raising right. your hand, yeah. having a moderator. Those are kind of important things. It's not the topic of our meeting today, but that might be something that we can talk about another time, how to conduct these meetings, how to be in charge of these meetings, because I think that's also important. Having a, appointing a moderator like we did, yeah. um, I think is, is important. So that person can move the conversation along, especially when you're in a virtual meeting and you can't always see all of the, um, uh, physical gestures or things that, um, you know, the ant people sitting ants in their pants and they're ready to leave or they're looking at their watch. It might be a little more, um, you know, we're, we're doing this, like they're sitting there and they're like completely not, you know, I mean, they yeah. might be doing something related to, um, 
to, right. to just you gotta like remember everybody can see you. Yeah, and shout out to my son right. Ben who's watching and my friend Christy. Thanks you guys. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think to being the moderator and now that um, we thought this was going to be a 20 minute chat and we're People over are asking now, a lot of questions. So it's yeah, it's great. It's absolutely yeah. great. But um, Sarah, do you, you want to stay to... on even if Doreen has to get off? Yeah, we can stay on some, yeah, for a couple some more questions. Minutes. Yeah, we can stay right. on some questions. If but... Some of the new people who are jumping on, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. All right, sure. then I'm going to say goodbye. Bye, everybody. Um, Bye. Connect with me. I'm going to, before I, I'm going to leave, and then I'm going to leave the blog post in a comment, and then I've got to go. Uh, thank you, ladies, for inviting me on this. And I think if there's a follow-up questions, I'll do it again next week. Yeah, okay, great. That sounds great. Thanks, Maureen. Thanks, Bye. Bye. So, um, so what Dorian was just saying, you know, all of those good rules that we have for in-person meetings apply to virtual meetings too. You know, making sure everybody gets a chance to talk, raising hands, letting people interrupt you, really important, especially when we're in this kind of scenario where you can't just sort of tap on the desk or um, have some more of those visual body language clues. Right. That, raising uh, hands is great. I mean, you literally, and then, you know, also have a pre-meeting with how it's going to run. Like even even if you're watching this and your your managers or your facilitators aren't necessarily doing it um, the way we're talking about it, and I'm not saying like there's one right way or anything, but suggest to them say, hey, let's figure out some of the uh, the protocols, like the etiquette that we want to have. So if somebody needs to talk, especially if it's more than um, four people on a call, it's really important to do this. Otherwise, it's very easy, like on a regular phone conference call, to talk over each other. Um, and you can still make mistakes here, but if you remember to do this, it, it it's uh, it's certainly helpful. And, and be patient and respect that some people will still raise their hand and not jump in, and other people will just jump in. And then the person who's raising their hand is still kind of sitting there from um, right. a few minutes ago. So Right. You know, you need to have a plan in place for who's going to like facilitate the call. Also, mm -hmm. there's chat. We haven't talked about like all of these platforms have a chat window um, that yeah. you can add so that people can ask a question in the chat. So maybe you want right. to speak to that, Sarah. Well, that's what I'm just scanning through right now. I'm on my second screen, too. That's one thing to to think about too is that I'm not paying, I'm not ignoring Kate. I'm just looking at what right. other people and are that's, saying. And that's what I'm doing too, because we're looking yeah. at comments. Um, and yeah. Gretchen, thank you for joining us. And I would say um, to allow people to Thanks, ben. interrupt you a little bit more, you know? And yeah. it, it's okay to let people interrupt and interject because I'm a person who asks a lot of questions in meetings. And sometimes with these things, I feel like I'm over talking with people, but if Kate and I were in a room together, I'd interrupt her with a clarifying question and she'd answer it and just keep moving on, right? It's, right. it's the same as if we were in the same room. And Doreen did post her blog post. So yay, Doreen. Um, Bob is saying um, who's up for a virtual coffee hour. So I think we can do that for sure. Especially um, in the coming days, you know, this could be a while, everybody. And, and this is a nice way to stay connected. Um, at least at the end of the day, I, I won't feel so alone. Right. <laughs> Whether it's business or personal. Exactly. It's funny. I've used Zoom for five years. Wish I bought stock in it. Mm. Um, and it wasn't until this weekend that I said I have a, a very close group of five friends. We get together a few times a year. Um, and we've been doing a lot of texting lately, the last year or so, I'd say we've done a lot more group texting. And then Friday, I was like, what, what are we doing? Why am I not using my, my Zoom platform to bring everybody together? So I just opened up the line and gave them a chance um, to come in. If they were free, they were free. If they weren't, they weren't. Some people were on camera, some people just called in some, you know, someone was driving through Vermont, and they just, um, hopped on the call. So it's a great way to do that. And also, like I said before, opening up the line so that your colleagues can just ask you questions, you know? Um, so I just thought I just thought of one more thing just to play on something we spoke about earlier, but we didn't talk mm -hmm. about it in this way, is sort of framing yourself. <laughs> you know, we talked about the camera being at eye level so that it just you feel connected and it just seems more natural, just like you would if you were sitting across the table from someone. But if you'll notice um, uh, way I've got myself framed, 
if the rules of photography are the rule of thirds, so like mm -hmm. there's a line here, an imaginary line, and there's an imaginary line here. You want your eyes typically in the upper third. Right. Um, again, it depends on your, your, so, you know, you can tilt your laptop to get it where you want. So like this would be kind of weird um, yeah. because you're looking up at, you know, so you can adjust it here and don't worry about cutting off just a portion of the top of your head because like the brain can fill that in. Um, mm -hmm. But like that's uncomfortable. Uh, yeah. It also, you know, shows that ick. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a little further away, actually. But I'm like it's arm because if you're at a stand-up desk, so it's a little bit different. Yeah. But you're still lit well. You're still in mm -hmm. the center. You know, you don't. Sometimes people are off here, or they're, you know, they're like this. You know, right. this is not the place to be like slouching. I was doing a, um, a video workshop last night, and I could actually see everybody. There were 52 people on the call. And um, I could see all the the thumbnails, and there was there was a guy who was like laying on his couch, like he was watching the Super Bowl or something. Um, no, of, no offense, I'm not saying it to be mean, but you know, it's just it's it's just again, it's back to the etiquette piece. Look engaged, and you're going to have a much more productive, meaningful meeting if everybody is like seated or standing, engaged, you know, lean into the mm -hmm. camera for emphasis if you need to. It's okay to right. use your hands or something. You know, you don't have to just be this talking head, you know, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's also, you're also inclined sometimes to look at your own thumbnail. I know. When you're talking, <laughs> and I'm guilty of it. And yeah. I don't mean to, but when I'm talking, I think it's because I'm just making sure that I look like people can see me okay or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I'm also looking at at Sarah, and even though she's to like the side of me on the screen, I'm still looking at her eyes. It doesn't right. look like I am. It looks like I'm looking off to something else. So mm -hmm. don't don't worry about it. Right. I typically move. I bump up these um, video thumbnails as close to my camera as I can get them. Yep. So that they're and especially if we're working on documents, I, I do a lot of meetings like this where we're working on documents together, sharing screens, making sure we capture everybody's ideas. Um, so that looking away, um, is, is fine. It's absolutely yeah, it fine. Is. And remember a lot of people are going to be doing this in lieu of staff meetings, right? Right. So your corporate culture may be, yeah, I can lean back in my chair and, and relax, but you don't want to be like the guy on the pretzel commercial, right? There's this pretzel commercial where he's chomping away on pretzels and he hasn't muted his line and he's oh, sitting geez. there in his underwear, but <laughs> No, there was somebody who I was talking to last week said they were on a call and they needed to get up and they said they needed to get up to go do something. And they literally like had their boxers on and oh, they, no. could, they couldn't get up and they couldn't just like turn off the video. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even if you're going to wear pajama bobs, mm -hmm. wear, you know, back to Bob Farnham's comment earlier, he's like, he goes, um, he goes, well, at least I put on pants. So yeah, yeah, pants are good. Pants are a good idea. Pants are good. Pants are good. Yeah. So does anybody have any um, other questions? Let's see. Linda Hamilton yeah, just, um, just posted a comment here. I'm trying to see the whole thing. I am interviewing two women who are serial entrepreneurs on Thursday. The original topic is lessons learned from selling your business, but we are adding crisis planning for business owners and their advisors. The call is open to business owners and advisors, accounting coaches, wealth advisors, etc. Do you think it is best to use the chat for questions and limit the mic to the panel and moderator? Well, so I've done a lot of webinars with like a hundred kids on the call where I'm interviewing someone. Um, and what I tend to do, is, we record them too and post them to YouTube. So I turn off every, if I'm doing that, if I'm recording something and people need to play it, want to play it back, or you want to use it for other purposes later, I'd say turn off everybody's camera, mute all their lines. And you, most platforms, you can have people do that as they enter the, the conference. Right. So um, mute everybody. We were talking earlier, um, I think, Kate, you use the webinar function on Zoom. I use the meeting function on Zoom. So if you are the person who's making this decision, look through and test how these different tools work. I personally don't like how the webinar tools on Zoom work. I love everything else about Zoom. It's just that it's a little clunky when it comes to the webinar because you have a chat and you have a Q&A and sometimes people don't know where to put questions. So I just use the, the flat out meeting, um, the meeting piece. Um, and if I have more than more than 10 people is really hard to to negotiate those questions. Um, 
especially if you're taking questions as people are talking and you want to interrupt them. Um, but I have at the end, um, for instance, I did a, a webinar a few weeks ago where I had a whole classroom. You know, we gave them, we opened their line. And so each of the kids in the classroom could ask a question. So mm -hmm. if you moderate it well, um, you can have an open line. Otherwise, if it's a big group, I would say no. You just had a you just had a big group last night. I Kate. did, but I wasn't. It wasn't my account. It was the uh, it was the it was the found it was the organization's account. Um, Bob just said he actually prefers the meeting function on Zoom over the webinar too. I guess I wasn't actually aware of it, so I need to check that out. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, is if you do use the webinar on Zoom, you have to already have a paid account. You actually have to pay extra for the webinar. Um, yeah. I think forty dollars. And so you have to pay it for the month. Um, and right. then you could just, after you've done your webinar, you can just cancel that part of it. Um, so tell me about more about the meeting part in Zoom. I'm not aware of that, Sarah. So the meeting part is if you have a free account in Zoom, it's the same tools that you, you get. You have a free account or a paid account? No, I have a paid account. I have a paid so account too. By the way, let's just back up. So if you sign up for Zoom, you can get free Zoom, but your call can only be 40 minutes. Right. Just want to be clear. If you need to do something longer than 40 minutes, then you need to go to a paid account. And the 40 minutes will cut off. You could be in the middle of something and boof, gone. Right. The, you do get a little timer at the top yeah. of the screen. It gives you about a 10 down. minute. It gives me about a nine minute warning, I think. Right. Right. And I think there's some things that you don't get. I don't think you can register in advance for something um, for okay. a meeting if you have a free account. Don't count me out on that. It could be. It's been a long time since I've used a free account on Zoom. So I don't know that specifically. But um so the meeting piece is how do you use that? So the meeting you... piece, you just set it up like a meeting and okay. it looks different. The The toolbar is the same, which is great for Zoom. The Zoom um, toolbar is agnostic when it comes to the platform. So the buttons are gonna be in the same place, whether you're using a phone, whether you're using a browser, you're using the Zoom app, whatever it is that you're using. Some of the things, if people don't use, download the Zoom meeting app, either on a tablet or on their laptop or something like that, they may lose some functionality when it comes to chat. Okay. It's just one of those things. Um, and so for pricing with meetings, um, you had talked about the webinar piece adds a cost onto that. Yes. If you just stick with meetings, you get so many seats and your pricing is just based on your seats. Oh, okay. And then you just, um, you just set up your meeting um, in your dashboard in the browser, not in your, if people know what I'm talking about, Zoom has its own little app where you can yep. quickly set up meetings and things. But if you want more advanced features, you can go to their website and you log Do in. Do you see account. the thumbnails of people who are in the meeting or yeah. is it just you, the speaker, and then they're coming in sort of via chat? Um, I, what I do is, um, hang on a second. <laughs> <coughs> Wash your hands before uh, you go out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so what I do is I set it up so that everybody's muted and video is off. And then what I do is I turn on the cameras and the microphones for the people who are speaking. Gotcha. Um, so that they're always you control it. Too. I control it. Yeah. yeah. So it's just a little different. Okay. Um, the other thing is there's another thing. tool that some people use, and many of you have been using this in your organizations or companies, is go to meeting. That's, oh. still, that's still another way. I don't like it. I don't like yeah. it at all. Um, like and talk about, talk about clunky. Yeah. So if you have been using it, you may, if, if you are the, the, on the leadership team or something, you may want to consider something like, like Zoom, which is, and, and the other thing about Zoom that I have to say is the technical quality of Zoom is, is the best in the business. It's just, mm -hmm. you can't beat it. Um, yeah. Yes, there can be some quick glitches or this or that, but it's recovery is awesome and that's uptime is, is stellar. It's amazing, it's amazing. I've used WebEx, I've used GoToMeeting, um, and I find one of the challenges is that their, um, their toolbars are different. So if you're on a Mac, if you're on Windows, it's slightly different and it's hard to troubleshoot for people especially if you're working with people who aren't as tech savvy, who can't figure out, oh, that three button, those three little dots mean that I could click on and get more, get more functionality. Um, I know that some people are moving to office teams. I haven't heard of that it's one. Of, it's part of the Office 365 package, apparently. 
Um, I have a friend who works on a college camp, who's a college professor. And is anyone said, listening familiar with that? Just put something in the comments. Yeah, my friend Steph is. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> She's getting her training right now on it. I also want to um, just give a shout out to Heather Hyman from, um, gosh, is it South Carolina or North Carolina? Anyway, yeah. um, Heather is another uh, social media expert that that you can follow when you spell Hyman, H-E-U-M-A-N. Yeah. Sweet and tea and social marketing. I think I might have butchered that, Heather. Sorry. Put it in the comments. <laughs> Um, and Linda Hamilton just asked, you know, we're talking about cameras and stuff. Did you say that you would turn off the cameras and mute all if you have more than 10 in your group? Yes, I would. Unless you're actually trying to have a round robin kind of thing. Um, our meeting is more of a panel discussion rather than a webinar. And so, you know, I use the term webinar loosely. If you are doing a panel, yeah, yeah. we've done trainings where we're sharing slides and then we have three expert panelists. So they're their video is lit up so that people can see them talking. Mm -hmm. and it's just a little more engaging, especially if you're going to use it again. Um, I do the webinars, interviews that I do, um, we typically post to YouTube. So um, it's nice to be able to see the speakers' faces. Um, I added another comment, Sarah, do you see it? Teams, yeah, that teams work well. And she said that they're using it for employee chat. Things like OneNote, which is but great. One thing because, you do too, Linda, is at the beginning when everybody's live or however you're doing it, is you can like reiterate on live video, reiterate like what the house rules are. You know, take a minute to say, you know, please everybody, you know, welcome, glad you're all here. Please mute your microphones, even though you may have talked about it in advance. That way, if you are doing like a live or something like that, um, you know, it's just that you, you don't don't be afraid to sort of set the house rules in the first, you know, minute. Right. And Bob is letting us know that you can use the space bar to mute and unmute your mic. Oh, I never knew about that, that Bob. That's awesome. Totally forgot about that. I don't know yeah. if that works on my Yeti, though. The Ooh, other thing no, that's Bob. great about Teams is that you can blur your background. You know, when we were talking about staging and, and what's going on behind you, that kind of thing, not everybody can move furniture right now. You know? Right, exactly. A, and Zoom allows you to have virtual background now. You do have to have a certain type of um, computer to use it without a green screen. So you can actually right. have these virtual backgrounds, but you have to, well, you can test it. If you go into Zoom and you choose virtual background, um, it'll it'll give you what your computer needs in order to do it. Otherwise, if you want a virtual background, like the ocean <laughs> and you're sitting right. in your office, then in order, you, if you don't have the right computer, um, with the right technology, then you would need a green screen. Um, and if you all don't know what a green screen is, I'm just gonna just turn my computer around. I actually have one set up in the other end of my office. I don't know if you all can see it. It's something that hangs um, on the wall. Turn a little and it's further away from your, um, a little further away from your window because we're just getting some too much right. light. Hang on a second. I or you can post a picture in the comments afterwards. Yeah, I can. Let me just see if I can do this better here. So. Is it coming in now? Uh, no, not quite. Okay. Anyway, we'll it's about a five pictures. by seven thing that I hang on my wall. It's a green screen. And the best way to describe green screen is like when you see weather, weather people on the news and they've got like the whole map behind them, they're actually in the studio standing in front of a wall that has a certain, it's a certain shade of green that you have to have. And it's a green mm -hmm. screen. And then they have technology called a chroma key, which basically puts whatever background they want behind them and it makes them look like they're standing in front of a map or you know an ocean or whatever. So um, uh, I don't use it because I prefer to have my stage background. It's just because it feels more personal to me. Um, right. But some people like it. And again, that virtual background piece is possible and Zoom gives you some really nice looking um, arty backgrounds that are, you know, they could be the moon, <laughs> it could be the ocean, right. it could be uh, an office boardroom or something. And right. you can select from them if you want to have a virtual background. Like if you're in a hotel room, you might not want to show like you don't you don't don't want the unmade bed showing behind you. Mm -hmm. So um, if you can have a virtual screen, then that helps, too. Right. Right. So this is pretty advanced stuff, you know, for anybody who um, is just getting onto video conferencing and needs to know the basics. Um, listen to the beginning if you're just joining us. I'm um, listening to the beginning about audio and lighting because those are really, really important. Bob, so, feel free to share the screenshot in the comments if you want. That's fine. Thanks for asking. Yeah. So, um, 
Um, and the other thing is, if you want to make it fun, remember we were talking about showing some personality and corporate culture when it comes to this video conferencing. If your Zoom accounts allow you to do the virtual backgrounds, you can do something fun, right? And people can, you can also personality. Your company could also do a branded background. You can actually create a background. Um, and oh, that's, marketing, that's, marketing, that's marketing. Really, <laughs> I know that's getting really advanced, but I know a lot of people do it. For example, we had Vivica Von Rosen here from Van Gresso on at the top. They use a branded background image. And then so the five people on their team have the same branded background image. But again, that's right. marketing stuff. It's more advanced. Um, but, you right. know, it is an option. And if you are sort of in the corporate communications or the PR department for it, for a company and you have to do these um, maybe live shots or you want your CEO to do something, you can just use your trade show backgrounds, right? You yeah. can use those vertical. Um, yes banners that we all have those pull-ups we call them whooshes there's one client i had who used to call it whoosh because it goes whoosh when you pull it up um or your step and repeat whatever it is that you have as part of your corporate marketing um you can put that behind you too so yep. that it's something a little different than your bulletin board or things like that right so, so yeah so maybe we should just do a quick summary and wind this up yeah. Um, you know, if you want to just kind of go through some of the, the hot, hot points, then, uh, and then sure. if anybody has a last minute question, we'll answer it. We can certainly do that. So I think first and foremost is to be, be forgiving, but also make it better, right? That we all have these microphones and cameras on our laptops and there are ways to make it better so that people can hear you better and people can see you better and you can be a better participant in these meetings. Because that's really what it comes down to, right, is to be um, part of your work group, um, but virtually now. Right. right. So yep. we talked it's going to make you connected and it's going to lead to more meaningful meetings. Things are going to sink in better and the productivity is just going to be way better. Exactly. Than than, than not having them technologically sound. And it ha doesn't have to take, it's not rocket science to make it happen, it's easy. It's just, right. just being, being thoughtful. Right, um, so in being thoughtful, using headsets, right? Using whatever headset you have, um, even if it's just your phone, testing out your platform to see what um, sound works good. There are times where Zoom can get a little flaky when it comes to, um, comes to the internet voice that you can get through the voice over IP. So sometimes actually calling in makes a difference. So Skype is the worst, I have to say, when it comes to, to audio. So make sure that you can be heard and other people can hear you. We talked about lighting, you know, trying to have some natural light if you can, or trying to brighten up your lighting so that you don't look like you're in a bunker and you don't look like, oh, we didn't talk about backlighting. The people who sit, oh, in, front of really a not, do not sit in front of a window. <laughs> Actually, we kind of said that at the beginning because yeah. what will happen is it's going to show the window and you're going to be like this black shadow. Yeah. Just shadow man. Right. <laughs> don't want to be that shadow person. Shadow person. Um, we talked about camera position and um, not just to be seen, but also ergonomically, you're going to feel a lot better working if you have your camera up so that you are looking at it with your shoulders down, your head up, sitting well. Um, and Kate, you talked about the, the rules of three, about trying to have your, your eyes maybe in the upper third, if you can do that. Yep. Um, we also talked about learning your platform before you go. So preparing for your meetings as you would anywhere else, knowing where is my mute button? Um, where is the chat? How do I use this before you actually get on to it? Um, Can I share one thing I just thought of at the time? So sometimes when you log in, sometimes your mic doesn't connect right, even if you think it does. And then people are going, can you hear me? And then if they can't hear you, they look into the camera and they do signals like, can you hear me? Um, right. you know, so there's always a chat. It's not always obvious. So look at whatever platform you're using, look around in the toolbar. There's usually a chat. You can click on it and then I'll open up a chat box. The other right. thing you have to have a pad of paper or a post-it note. And if you can't hear them, you know, write a message and hold it up to the camera so that they can That's see a great it. Point. That's um, a great point. The other point too, is to have your cell phone have everybody when you're prepping for the meeting and say, please have your cell phone nearby so that if you're having any tech issues logging in, text me or call me and I'll work it out. So I keep right. my phone right here. I do it with every client. Text mm -hmm. me if you're having issues because then at least I can pick up the phone and walk you through how to do it. Click on here, hover here, whatever. 
So, right. um, you know, be prepared so that you don't panic. Because then if you don't hear, you're like, oh, my God, it's not working. And, uh, and then right. you just freak. Um, right. So breathe. <laughs> exactly. And, well, and you log off and you miss the meeting, right? Right. And reach out. So, you know, again, reach out to the planner of the meeting saying, okay, if I have a trouble signing in on in real time, who should I call? Right. Right. And we're all going to, we, we just all have to buckle up for this, right? Yeah. This is going to be around for a while. We're going to have to deal with Wi-Fi issues coming in and out. We're going to have to deal with camera glitches. Um, we're going to have to deal with people being late just as if they were in the office, right? right. Showing up for something. Um, so to be a little more forgiving, but again, do it better, right? This yeah. Is I mean, we did it. And a lot of the people who are working at home are now working at home with kids and all from all ages. Mm -hmm. And um, they're trying to, they might be having to work for school. And so, um, you know, I think that employers need to be understanding that this isn't just the adult working from home. There are other things going on. There could be another, the, the other spouse or mm -hmm. partner could be having to do virtual. Um, and there's also kids who have to be doing virtual. Doreen brought it up earlier. This is a very different dynamic than we've ever experienced. So there needs to be patience and compassion um, right. And just kindness and support. And maybe you have to reschedule the meeting. Mm -hmm. or maybe you have to ask to reschedule the meeting. Mm -hmm. The other thing is also you can record these calls. So if for some reason someone can't be on that meeting, you can record a call, especially on Zoom. I think you can do them on the other platforms too. And then after the call is over, uh, like Zoom will send you the link and you can send a shareable link so that everybody can log in to see the replay. So right. that's really important too, because... Right. You know, maybe somebody can't log on for whatever reason. Right. And if you can't hold, those are pretty big files. And sometimes your IT people may not want you hosting those on the company servers. You can upload those to YouTube and just make them private so that everybody with the link can watch it. It's not like a big public, a public right. link that anybody can stumble upon on YouTube, but you can use that to host so that you're not using up a, a ton of your, your data. Right. And on Zoom, you can choose to record to your computer or you can choose to record to the cloud. I always choose to record to the cloud. Then right. when they send me the link, they send me a host link, which is just mm -hmm. for me. And they send a shareable link, which you can send to all of the people who were in the meeting. Right. Um, and that may be I don't even have to have been in the meeting. So if, so if you want somebody to watch it who might not have been in the meeting, um, then you can send the link to them too. But make sure you send them the shareable link. Right. And make sure that your account... Um, accounts for that too. Yeah. Because if you are saving a lot of them, you may start bumping up in pricing. And if that's a concern, something to check out. So yep. which is why I do it the cheap way. <laughs> well, I do a lot of my client interviews on Zoom and I like to keep them for at least a year just in case. Yeah. So, you know, the other thing is you can go and get a very easy external hard drive. Um, mm -hmm. I like to, I like to keep them. I also take a lot of pictures, but you know, it, you can either USB or whatever. I have a Mac. Um, but it's it's worth getting an external hard drive just to keep some of that stuff. Um, again, I have a lot of, I do Zoom stuff constantly, so I have a right. lot built up. Right. Um, but if you were in a company, you know, if we were in bigger spaces, yeah. we would need to make sure that we follow all the IT procedures, right? Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. So, um, so um, I anyway, I, yeah, I think we covered it? everything. Yeah. yeah. And of course, um, I just touched my face. Her, I know. <laughs> I haven't scratched my head all the, all the whole time we've been on here. Um, that's one of my little pet peeves of myself is, you know, not going like this all the time when I'm on a video call. You know, it's funny. I thought of one thing about etiquette. Like we've each coughed a couple times. Now I could just cough in my own office. I'm the only one here. Mm -hmm. And yet I'm thinking model good behavior. If 50 people are watching me, if I'm going to cough, I'm going to like still do this. Right. Just to make sure everybody still kind of gets it. <laughs> Well, I caught myself actually turning away from the, per you know, coughing away from people as if I were, yeah. Bob just said, I like, oops, wait a minute. Bob just said, uh, I like sharing it to the Zoom cloud storage and the raw video can be shared with the folks on the call with a simple link. Yeah. 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 Oh. Bob, so. thank you so much for um, participating. You shared a lot of really helpful information. Again, people, if you want to connect with Bob Farnham, uh, Bob the Green Guy on Facebook, um, on LinkedIn and everywhere else, um, be sure to, because he's he's a really good resource and I'm sure he wouldn't mind answering people's questions too. He's also a techie guy. He's really good with video cameras and stuff. So if you have questions on that stuff, you know, let him know. 
He says, cough into your left elbow and bump right elbows. <laughs> That's awesome, Bob. So, thank you, everybody. So, yeah, thanks, everybody. Um, and everybody who's um, watching this, feel free to connect with us. I think we're all linked um, onto the whatever post that we're going to post. You can find us, message us. Again, we're here to help. Um, and uh, and we'll get through this. We will get through this. Yeah. You know? And we'll make and, it fun. We'll make it fun. Here, we'll and, make it fun before we go. And here, I'm going to put so. the glasses over my glasses and look like a complete <laughs> There you go. Bob, Bob says we both rock. Oh, that's great. <laughs> thanks, everybody. And thanks, thanks everybody. For, Sarah, thanks thank you for this great idea. This really worked out well. And I think that there were a lot of people on asking a lot of good questions. So I, I hope I hope we helped a lot of people today. And so anyway. Great. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye.